notification. That's awesome. Okay, I think I'm back. Um, I'm on my Wi-Fi, so hopefully we'll stay connected this whole time, and that was just a little blip. I don't know. We'll see. So, anyways, we're working on the free vanity, and um, so far to this piece, it's in really good condition. I'm pleasantly surprised. It had a bunch of surface scratches. Um, not too bad. I sanded those out, and this piece um, is oak, so oak can bleed sometimes. So I'm gonna play it safe. I'm playing it safe and I went ahead and I applied two coats of clear boss and I let that dry. So um, boss is a um, primer from Dixie Bell Paint Company and you use boss when you're worried about um, tannins bleeding through or smells or odors or stains. So um, I, I went ahead and put two coats of clear boss on this. It also comes in white, but I went with clear. So, um, I am all ready to paint. Uh, oh yeah, I added this little center, like a counter desk top area because it was missing, or it appeared to have been missing, and it had these little, um, little slides on the side for a little uh, plank of wood to slide right in there so that uh, people can use that space to apply their makeup or write a letter or whatever it is people do at desks and vanities. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate appreciate you hopping on. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the painting and I'll try to catch any questions. Um, hey everybody, um, but I like to stick to the uh, work on my lives. And if I miss your questions, I'll get to them after um, um, the live is over, but go ahead and drop them in the comments if you have any. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start by showing you what I have in mind for this piece, which is a sort of not complete vision. I kind of know what I want to do to it, but not exactly. So I'm going to let it kind of guide the way as we're painting it. I know what pink colors I'm going to use. I don't know. I don't know if you saw my post uh, maybe a couple days ago um, with the color palette that I wanted to use. It was actually a photo of some flowers and it had these really pretty colors in it that inspired me to want to paint something those colors. So the flowers themselves were this really pretty bright orange. So um, the complementing colors with it were very similar to these. Actually, I looked at them, they're almost exact match to these colors from Dixie Belle. I've got In the Navy, which is a really nice dark navy blue. Um, I have got Antebellum Blue, which is a pretty blue with a tint of teal to it. And Sea Glass, which is almost a minty color, but just a little bit more blue than mint. Got a little bit more blue undertones rather than green. So um, those are the colors I'm going to be using. And then um, for the inspiration from the flowers, which were bright orange, I'm going to be adding some transfers that have bright orange in them. So um, we're gonna go ahead and paint our blues, and then um, we'll add that pop of color in via some transfers. So I don't know if we'll get all the way to that today, but I'm gonna get as far as I can. So I'm going to be starting with my In the Navy, and I'm going to do a blended uh, background, and you'll see where I'm going with this once I start, hopefully. Um, we'll, we'll just see, see what happens, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my In the Navy, and we're gonna start towards the bottom of the piece. I've got the drawers in it right now because we're going to paint the drawers first and I wanted you to be able to see them on the, on the screen. So I put them in the piece, we're gonna paint them in the piece, including the edges and everything. And then I will take them out to let them dry and paint the body of the, of the, the cabinet portion. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on my drawers. I'm gonna go ahead and open my In the Navy with, um, I'm gonna be putting, putting that on with my, let's see which one I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use an oval medium synthetic brush from Dixie Belle. Um, this is the oval medium synthetic. Love these brushes, they're great. And I like to start out with a damp brush when I'm using the chalk mineral paints because they tend to be a little thick and using or misting the water and using a damp brush will help kind of um, spread them out a little bit and make your paint last longer too. So win-win all the way around. So I'm gonna go ahead and get, I'm gonna actually lose the stool and I'm gonna get down and down and dirty. 
So we're going to start on our bottom draw. This one is actually one drawer. It looks like two, heh, but it's a trick. It's one. So we're going to apply our in the navy, in the navy. I'm going to have to get that song queued up so every time I paint with that color, I can just play a little clip of it like a DJ. So in the navy, as you can see, I'm not doing like a straight ombre fade from top to bottom. I'm going to do a blended look, but it's going to have my colors placed strategically. Um, and I'll try to explain to you how I'm strategizing where I place my colors. So basically, I, I get a lot of comments that my pieces look like there's a light shining on them or they're glowing sort of or they're lit. And I do that on purpose, and the way I do that is with my blending. So basically, you want to think about um, natural light and how it hits when there is a light source. So normally, you'll have a light source coming from, let's just say in this instance, I have a light shining down on this piece. That means my lightest colors are going to be highlighted in the centers and tops of, of my surfaces, um, which also means that the shadows would be in corners and towards the bottom. Okay, if you just think about there's a light shining on this. So that is how I'm going to place my colors. I'm going to keep the darker colors um, towards the bottom and in corners. So, and that's just a general guideline. You don't have to make it look exactly like there's a light shining on it. So I'm going to kind of put little highlights of the in the navy upwards. But for the most part, It'll be down lower on the piece. Okay, so we're going to start there. And then we're going to move over to these draws here and do a similar kind of thing. These are actually two, though. They're not one. So I'm going to create a similar kind of shape here, almost like a smiley face. Okay? Um, so we're creating our shadows within the navy. And then making a sort of sh smiley face shape. Okay, and you want to make sure you get your side edges and your top lip of your um, drawers the best you can for a nice finished look. Okay, and then I'm going to do a little kind of accent of in the navy up here. Just a little hint. Once we blend it in, it'll just be a little hint of in the navy, um, the dark, dark blue color up here. Okay? So, next, after we're done with in the navy, we're going to move on to, let's see. What did I have next? I had hmm, antebellum blue. Antebellum blue, one of my favorite blues. I love blue. It's got just a little slightest hint of teal in it, which I love. All right, I'm gonna come up this drawer just a little bit with my blue, my in the navy. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna set that aside until we get to our cabinet. I like to spray my brushes with some water if I'm gonna let them sit for a minute so they don't dry up and get hard. Just a little tip, tip of the day. All right, so I got my antebellum blue from Dixie Bell. Look how pretty that color is. Ooh, it's so pretty. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna use an oval medium for that also. Oval medium synthetic brush from Dixie Belle for that as well. Get a little damp with my um, continuous spray Mr. Bottle. And I'm gonna move back over to this set of drawers and I'm gonna fill in, I'm gonna fill in my smiley face with the antebellum blue. Look how pretty that blue is. Oh, he's so pretty. So pretty. And I'm not worrying about necessarily blending on the on the first coat. <clears throat> if the colors start to blend a little bit, that's okay. But I'm not purposely trying to blend on the first coat. Um, I'm just basically laying down kind of 
a map, if you will, of where I want my colors to fall um, when they're all said and done. So um, this is where I want my antebellum blue to be, and I'm just going to fill in these spots. And I'm going to create another kind of smiley face here, half smiley face, I guess. Actually, no, I'm just going to go ahead and fill that in. We're going to go ahead and fill in this whole area with antebellum blue. Make sure you get your side and your top edges of your draws. I'm going to make it look like you finished it. And then I'm going to come up here on this drawer just a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and do a kind of angle, other half smiley face on this side. Think about how amazing this is going to look with those bright oranges. The bright oranges against the blues is going to be so pretty. <coughs> it's going to make it really pop. Alright, so we got our other half smiley face over here. Let me get my side edges of my drawer so that I'm not missing spots. Cool. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm going to go ahead and move to my other drawers and fill in my antebellum blue here in these spots. Fill in my smiley face here. To this drawer and we've got our almost upside down smiley half smiley face here so we're going to go ahead and fill in that whole area and then um, when we move on to our next color we'll put a little highlight of there of the next color right there but we'll go ahead and fill it in for now So now we're going to move up here and we're going to do another kind of half smiley face like that. Boom. All right, there's our half smiley face. I love these drawers. They're just, um, <clears throat> they have these inset or recessed areas. They just give it a little bit of detail, but not so much that it makes it a focal point. But it's really nice for you know adding waxes um, afterwards or glazes. It's perfect for that. So I love these types of recessed areas on <clears throat> on drawers. <coughs> right, so I'm gonna keep my brush wet. So this is the I mean. All right, and now I'm gonna move on to my sea glass. So sea glass is this really pretty, kind of almost minty, light blue, minty color. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, hey everybody, thank you for tuning in. Um, so if you missed it earlier, I'm using In the Navy, Antebellum Blue, and Sea Glass for the, my base coats of my piece. And then I'm going to add some really pretty bright orange flowers. I'm guessing flowers. Yes, Kim, um, I ordered these tri wheel dollies off of Amazon, which is usually where I get them, and they usually come in the normal size. <laughs> these ones came in the size of like dinner plates, so they're huge. But so far, they're working. So, you know, whatever. They're working, so I'm not complaining, but they're huge. Absolutely huge. Um, all right, so sea glass. And this is a brand new sea glass, so I'll take that little thingy out and the edge. Okay, so for sea glass, I'm using a slightly smaller brush. I'm using the flat medium synthetic brush from Dixie Belle for my sea glass. Okay, so um, let's see, I didn't get that damp. Get it damp a little bit, and then. 
I'm going to dive right into my really pretty sea glass. And these colors are going to be so pretty together. I mean, they are so pretty together. I have literally never painted anything in sea glass. I've used it for, <clears throat> I think I've used it once with some other colors and like a blended look, but um, I've never used sea glass uh, quite this much anyways um, on a piece. So sea glass will be able to shine here on this piece. Literally, it's gonna be the highlight. Like I said earlier, when you're thinking about where you're placing your colors, when you're getting ready to blend them, Think about um, where the natural light source would be coming from and how that would look with the lighter colors kind of being highlighted on top. Little highlights. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, so I got my edges, got my detail. And now I'm going to do, I'm going to take a little bit of sea glass and I'm going to do kind of like a, let's see, I think I want to do a little highlight through here and blend that in obviously on our second coat to make, to make it look a little more natural. But we're gonna put a little highlight of sea glass there. And I think, I think, I think that might do us for now. We're just, we're not gonna get carried away with the sea glass. We're gonna use it, uh, hmm, what's the word? Not sparingly, but we're gonna be, I don't know, choosy, I guess, where we put our sea glass. So moving on to these draws, and I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of this guy with sea glass. Great color. I'm surprised I haven't used this color more, you know, because it really is a nice color. It's so pretty. It's a little pale, minty kind of blue, almost minty. Very um, tranquil. Very seaside inspired color. Um, let's get our sides, our top lip. All right, and now I'm gonna do just a little kind of accent of sea glass on, oh, let's do it right here. I don't want it to be symmetrical with the other side, so we're just gonna kind of make it look kind of random, kind of natural. All right, so that is our other little uh, accent of sea glass. This color is thick. Oh boy. I like my paint thick. And this one's really thick. All right, let me give that a little spray to keep it from drying out on me. So now we are done with our first coat on our drawers. So I'm going to take those out and let those dry. And then I'm going to start our, our base coat on the actual desk. So before I do that, I'm going to show you the transfers that I'm considering using. I'm pretty sure I will. Just got to figure out how exactly um, to place those. But so with this color, in this color scheme, the contrasting color is orange. So I've got these, um, this poppy, poppy transfer. And see those pretty orange poppies there? I'm going to use those. I'm not going to use the yellow and the red ones, but I'm going to use the orange ones out of here. Look, look at the orange with those blue and the sea glass color. That's pretty right. And then I've also got this transfer rose celebration. And this has got some peachy, orangey, pretty colored flowers in it. So I'm thinking I might use some of these as well. So when I'm layering my transfers, um, I, I have to think about kind of like the transparent qualities some transfers are a little bit less opaque some some transfers are a little more transparent than others and road celebration has just got a little bit of transparency so if i use that one i'm going to want to use it on the on the as the first layer and then i'll layer poppies on top um, because the poppies are opaque which means you can't see through them so the reason why I know about which transfers are kind of transparent and which aren't is because I've used them all, so it's from experience. But the more you use transfers, the more you'll understand which ones will look right on which colors and which ones you can't use on certain colors and which ones you can layer and which ones that you have to layer on the bottom. So um, you just have to trust me on this one, okay? So there's our oranges, all right? Our oranges that we're bringing into this pretty blue antebellum sea glass. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and 
Um, move on to painting the cabinet. Uh, see a little paint splotch I need to clean up here real quick. <clears throat> Alright, so now I'm going to take my drawers out and let those dry. <clears throat> and I'm hoping we'll get around to blending those today. If not, then um, maybe I can do another video on it when they're ready. But I really, I really hope we get to do some blending today. Oh, look at those two colors together. Oh, they're so pretty. And then the sea glass is just the right amount of brightness to set it off. Love it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start on this side here. And our, um, uh, our method or logic, I guess, um, for the body is the same as our drawers. We're going to start dark on the bottom and work our way up. Um, going to lighter colors and kind of sprinkling in the, the accents of each color along the way. That's the best way I can describe it right now. So let's just get to it. And grab our in the navy. Mm. I spilled a little bit. No big deal. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start down here. And I'm going to make my smiley face just like I did. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the bottom of the piece with the N and 80. And then on corners or pillars, I'm going to kind of bring it up. Like almost like, you know, a shadow would be. Just like a shadow would be actually. And make sure I get in those details and crevices really well. So this piece was free, like I told you. But, um... Normally when I think of free pieces, I think like falling apart and gross and dirty and smelling like cat pee. But this one was actually in amazing shape. It just had some scratches, so I sanded those out. Um, and then I put two coats of clear boss on it because it is oak and oak can bleed sometimes. So I, I'm playing it safe rather than sorry and I am um, priming it with my boss. All right, so we've got our in the navy down here, and I think, um, let's see, we're gonna go ahead and try to get the, you know what, I'm gonna, um, I'm not gonna paint the feet right at this moment. I'm gonna get the feet later, that way I can flip it up on its side and get my feet um, all around the feet and then the details. It's kind of hard to do it when it's upright. So I'm not gonna get my feet at the moment. I'm gonna flip it up later and do that. But, um, hmm. Okay, I think, I think that's our good for our in the navy on the side. So we're gonna move around to the front. Like I said, I'm gonna bring it up this pillar and then come back down like this. Bring it up this pillar. And back down. Gotta really pounce the paint into those details sometimes. They're stubborn. They can be stubborn. All right, so getting all around the base. Is there, I'm wondering, is there any like crazy color palettes that you can think of or you've been thinking of and you're dying to try or you're too scared to or you're gonna do it but you gotta find the right piece. Like, I wanna know what your crazy ideas for color palettes are. Tell me if there's something you're dying to try and you just have not pulled the trigger on it yet. I wanna know. I wanna know what your craziest color palette idea is while I paint. You tell me. All right, so this sucker is heavy too. It is a heavy, heavy piece. I'm going to try to turn it this way, and I'm going to continue around into this little, the leg hole here. We'll call it the leg hole. And we're going to create our smiley face in here too, just like we did on the sides and the drawers. Okay, see? Smiley face. And bring it on. 
here. And again, I'm going to paint my feet later. Unless I decide to paint them a totally different color, like gold or copper or something, I don't know. As of right now, they're going to be navy, in the navy. And um, this piece, I looked on the back, and the back is like, the back is like some sort of backer board that's like press board of some sort. So I'm not going to paint the back. Um, the back is not finished out, so this piece is meant to go up against a wall, so I'm not going to be painting the back on this piece. I, when I'm deciding if I'm going to paint the back, I, 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 look at, I took a look at the existing back and how it's finished out, and that's how I make my decision. Um, and so on this one, I'm not going to paint the back. But I take it on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, so if you can see in this leg hole, we're creating another little smiley face. Um, an upside down smiley face because we're going to put our lighter color in here um, as our highlight, okay? So, all right. Here's our smiley faces. And now I'm going to turn it this way and do the same thing in there. <clears throat> Can you see in there a little bit? All right. One more smiley face. We're gonna come up this pillar. I'm gonna stop right here because our drawers are still in there. We gotta take those out, but um, we will finish up around the other side just like we did this side. All right. Come up here. Smiley face. going to grab our antebellum blue and since I'm already over here I'm just going to go ahead and fill in <clears throat> fill in my smiley face with my antebellum blue should be about dry now or really soon and so we're going to blend those and that's probably how far we'll get today uh, on this piece okay so we fill in our smiley face with antebellum i'm going to fill in i'm actually just going to kind of outline this smiley face down here by the feet hole or leg hole, kind of just like that, okay? See what I'm doing? I'm just kind of following the curve of the smiley face, but I'm not completely filling it in, just part of the way. Okay, see how I did that there? Then we'll come back around to this side. Oh, these colors look so good together. Oh man, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back or anything, but these colors are awesome. Actually, you know, I should be patting, patting nature on the back because the picture that I was inspired by was that of flowers in nature. All right, so we're going to move on to the middle. Fill in our smiley face. And I am going to paint up underneath this board here. Um, but since you can't really see that, I'm going to do that um, not right now. Okay? So... I'm going to come up here at the pillar a little bit and then finish filling in my smiley face.
painkillers. Lots of little recessed areas and crevices on this piece, so kind of got to make sure that I'm filling those all in. All right, so I'm going to fill in my smiley face. at a time. And I'm going to start with my in the navy. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint my second coat right over where I currently have that color on my first coat. Easy, right? Just match up the colors. Match them up, match them up. And so I can keep my paint wet and workable. I'm going to give it a little mist with the water. This is just water and a continuous spray mister bottle. <clears throat> and once I've got my second coat of in the navy on and I've got everything covered, then I can grab my antebellum blue and do the same thing. Paint on my second coat with the antebellum blue. Just in the same spots where it currently is. Okay, so I'm gonna make my little face. I'm gonna give that a shot of water, a mist of water rather. And grab my dry, clean blending brush, and then we're just going to kind of do some circling motions on the details or the recessed areas, and then, and then start to blend those colors together just very gently. I'm going to wipe the excess paint off my brush because I don't like to be pushing around excess paint. A lot of people are asking me, well, why does my blend look muddy? It's because you're probably doing too many brush strokes and you're um, blending that, the, those colors together too much and it just muddies it up. So we want to get as best as we can in the minimal, minimal amount of brush strokes as we can. Oh my gosh, this, these colors blend famously. And I like to give my brush a good wipe every few strokes. All right. Um, can you see how pretty these colors are blending together? I'll get I'll I'll get it out and give you a little close up so you can see so you can see it better. But they're so pretty. These colors are so pretty. All right. That was almost effortless, wasn't it? Look at 
these colors. Ooh. Look how pretty that is. Ooh, so pretty colors, so pretty colors. Oh yeah, okay. Um, so I'm gonna move on to my next draw. And I'm gonna start with my antebellum blue. Start with my antebellum blue and just go over where I currently have my antebellum blue, <laughs> which is up here in this corner. Make sure I get my sides, my drawer edges there. And bring it over here, get these edges. And I'm gonna give that a quick misty, misty with the water. I'm gonna grab my, in the navy and do my little kind of accent swoosh up here. That, yeah, that's the technical term, accent swoosh. All right, and then I'm gonna go and blend those two colors. <clears throat> with just some little, I like to do circle emotions on details. It, it just works out better that way. And then just kind of just marry these colors together gently. And then some little circles. This big fat round brush that I use um, really does a lot of the work for me. You know, all I got kind of got to do is hold it up there and give it a little bit of a nudge, and it just mixes the it blends the colors so well. Okay. Now I want to add in my um, sea glass. I have, if you notice, I have a little accent of sea glass that was coming right around here. So I'm going to add that back in. I'm going to use the same brush that I've been using to blend. And I want to make sure I wipe off as much of that paint as I can. We don't want to mix our um, in the navy too much in with our sea glass. All right, so we're just going to gently kind of mix that in. Gentle, gently. I'm gonna give it a little mist of water, not too much, but um, just a little bit. And, cause I'm not quite done blending this and it's starting to dry up on me, so a little misty mist. Probably, probably about good for this guy. Yay. I should just stop, but I'm gonna keep trying for a bit. Just stop. Just stop. Sometimes you just have to put the brush down. Change. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, let's see. Blend in that little last stroke there. This. I'm telling you, this brush makes it effortless. Basically, effortless, right here. All right, so that was draw number two. All right, so next we're going to do our last drawer on this side. Mm. Thank you. 
All right, so we're gonna move on up and grab our antebellum blue. What do you think about these colors? Aren't they amazing? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna antebellum blue over here. Make sure I get my edges. I'm gonna have a nice completed professional type look. All right, and I'm give that a little miss. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add in my little um, accent swoopy here of, um, in the navy. And a little bit more on my brush there and kind of bring that up like that. strokes here to blend it in. All right, and then I'm gonna add my sea glass. Sea glass up top for the wing. Make sure you get your edges. And fill in all that little space. So now I'm gonna give it a little mist of water to keep it wet. And blend in my sea glass. So just some little strokes. Just little strokes. Okay. Let's give it a little bit of in the navy coming up. Just a little bit more of that color. So far, so good. So far, so good. There we go. And now we're going to kind of blend up here with some big fat billowy strokes. Just like that. Back off my brush. And now I want to clean up that blend with those strokes I just created. Okay, my phone started ringing, even though I put it on do not disturb, so uh, I'm back. But can you can see my blend, you can see where I'm going with this. Um, so we're gonna do the other set of drawers, just like this one. Just like this one, and then we'll do the cabinet in the same manner, same, same method. And I think that's it. And I already showed you the pretty orange flowers we would be adding. And um, yeah, either seal it with a clear wax or we'll seal it with a clear coat in satin. I've not quite decided yet. We usually decide that later on in the game. But that is the gist of the color palette and the blendy blend that I'm doing on this piece. So we are, yeah, we're well on our way. All right, so there you see it. You wanna, that's our start that of our base for this project. Ooh, I've got paint on my lip, look. <laughs> I've got paint on my lip, it looks like a Hitler mustache. That's awful. Um, the brush that I'm using is uh, redesigned with Primo Wax Stencil Brush, two inch. 
It's a natural bristle. You can get them from a Redesign with Prima retailer. And, <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump off here. And I, will, I appreciate you for tuning in and I'll see you Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Dixie Belle Paint Company main page. Have a great weekend.